Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Special Edition Part 2. Under Phil Boyer leadership, AOPA grew to well over 400,000 members. Also, what's next for one of aviation's most successful spokesmen? I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Former AOPA president Phil Boyer is considered one of aviation's most effective leaders. Over the course of 18 years, Phil led the organization to greater prominence and built membership numbers to well over 400,000. Heights of popularity the organization has not seen since his departure. Now, upon his retirement, Phil and his wife moved to an airport home where he continues his love for aviation for both manned and unmanned aviation. Since leaving the AOPA more than 10 years ago, Phil has owned two exceptional biplanes and a Beach A36 traveling machine and most recently has completed building and test flying of a Vans RV-12. Phil also served for a number of years on the board of Aspen Avionics and has become an accomplished drone pilot as well. Phil and ANN Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell talks about life after AOPA and how is retired life treating him. Have you stayed in the industry at all? Uh, so I recall you had uh, a couple of interests uh, post AOPA for a while. Yeah, I, I think uh, this is a little be, be a little retirement primer for people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I retired, having worked full time since I was 17, so 52 years of, of work, it was kind of a big, uh, my gosh, what I'm going to do. And so, and people would say, well, what are you doing in retirement? So I had to come up with a list, you know, kind of like to make them know that I wasn't just enjoying life and flying planes. So uh, I got probably for people who are going to go through this or in the midst of it, I got involved in quite a few things. Uh, every uh, uh, kind of association or like here in Ohio, I was on the uh, Aviation Dayton, uh, the uh, Air Force uh, uh, based uh, Aviation Hall of Fame. Uh, was on the board of the aviation of uh, the Ohio Aviation Association. Um, I stayed up uh, with some FAA things that I was on on new technologies, running to Washington for those. Um, I had uh, the, my my main interest was avionics, mm -hmm. and so very early on, actually just before I retired, I committed to be on the board of Aspen Avionics, and uh, and. Fast forward, I did. Uh, I joined a Rotary Club that's right here on the airport. Never been in Rotary before, but um, I spoke to a lot of the clubs and kind of enjoyed that, and I enjoyed the people, and um, just gotten involved in as many things I could. Done a lot of video work for the church because remember I have a broadcasting background. So, besides my hangar, I have a fully equipped editing room in my basement. Uh, with state-of-the-art equipment. And so I did a lot of video work and continue to do so for the church. But as the years went on, I started looking and say, especially as I started building a plane or, or looking at other interests, where am I really making a difference? And I started to shed most of these things um, just because I thought, well, you know, they can get along without me. And I'm really, uh, I'm really not of that essential. I kept Aspen on until about a year and a half ago. Um, and um, in, the, in the Rotary Club side, uh, I didn't like getting up at seven o'clock and being at a meeting down the airport at seven o'clock, number one. Number two, it just wasn't the Rotary Club type that I'd spoken to. Mm -hmm. So typical Boyer, I went out and started a new club yeah. <laughs> and was the charter president for what is now a very thriving club. Uh, the Cincinnati East Side, it's the east side of the city, Rotary Club, and we mm -hmm. does a lot of good public service work, et cetera. Um, and so that is, that's it. So right now, uh, I'm, I'm truly retired at this moment. As I say, I still do work, video work on a pro bono basis, all of this for the church, mm -hmm. and still, uh, you know, got an annual coming up on the RV, which I got to do, and always keeping, keeping the place up. We did. Uh, we did finally gave in to aviation in Florida, Jim. So, yeah. Um, had we had been vacationing even before I left AV, uh, AOPA, we'd been taking a week or so in in Naples, Florida. And we really loved it. Actually, I got involved in Naples because AOPA uh, had to fight a uh, curfew they wanted to put 
on uh, night operations of jets at this airport because it's really close to town. It's right in the middle of town mm -hmm. and uh, just happens to be where the airport is. And we kind of, I went there once before Sun and Fun to, uh, to see what's this all about. And uh, the big deal was we just didn't want to, sure, it was making some noise, but we didn't want the precedent of uh, an airport curfew uh, from 10 a.m., let's say, to 7 p.m. So um, it, it ended up being a voluntary curfew, which worked out fine. And now I live about seven minutes from that airport uh, mm -hmm. with a Florida condo that we have right downtown, right in the middle of everything. Uh, so we fly down there for the, for kind of the, the season some of the time mm -hmm. and in the, not the RV, but in the Bonanza. And, uh, and we found that lifestyle really, really nice. I visited Spruce Creek and many of your airports in Florida, but um, so, so that's kind of fun also. After the break, Phil talks about flying drones and life as a GA pilot. I believe that if people use the landing doctor training program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. Phil describes his growing interest in a number of aspects of aviation, including drones. And in the meantime, you became a drone pilot too, as I recall. Well, the video side of that, the television side got me involved in that. And I've gone through about every drone there mm -hmm. is out there. They've gotten smaller and smaller and better and better. And yes, I have. Actually, I have uh, even a letter to allow me to fly you know, to practice at least, here I am on an airport. How do you fly a drone when you're in the, the five mile cone? They don't want you flying. So I have a letter from the management of the airport giving me permission to stay below 400 feet and I'll stay on my property, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, I've used that for, for video work. Um, yeah, you make me recall that since I've been gone for the winter, I haven't done much drone flying. So I got to get back into that too. There you go. Well, it's been uh, it's been an interesting time uh, since you left AOPA. Aviation continues to kind of trudge along and so forth and so on. But as a user of the system, what's been your experiences as a GA pilot out and about traveling and, or for that matter, just flying for the hundred dollar hamburger? Well, I think uh, we have in the United States the world's greatest general aviation system. There's no question about that. Uh, right before I uh, joined AOPA in 1990, my wife and I took a trip in the 340 uh, over to uh, Europe and back, 12 countries, 28 days. This is when I was still working at, in television at ABC. And uh, there was, there's nothing like the United States, and there is nothing been since that's come up that's better. I think we've we faced a lot of challenges, some of them during my tenure, uh, others passed when I left AOPA, uh, and I think uh, I think we still have the greatest uh, system in the world. Yes, there are isolated instances at certain airports and, and certain mm -hmm. issues, but uh, you know, uh, I know uh, I went kicking and screaming when I had to equip my planes with ADSB, and it was my fault <laughs> that we all had to do that because I felt if we don't do this, we're going to get start getting charged for using the airspace and. It, uh, 
people people continue to say to me, well, geez, uh, you know, um, why are we having to do this? And I say, well, you know, our aviation fuel taxes, that's what funds uh, the system for general aviation. $30 million a year they bring in. And flight service alone um, costs around 450 to 500,000 a year. So we, and that doesn't, so we have all these towers, all this ATC for us in general aviation with no charge. Mm -hmm. um, and the price we had to pay was obviously better surveillance uh, and, uh, and maybe a little more reliance on outside services. Uh, I took a survey from Embry-Riddle a few weeks ago. Uh, it was an online Zoom call like this and they didn't want to identify the people, so they didn't have any idea. I knew what I was talking about, but it must have been empowered by flight service. And they said, when's the last time you've called flight service? Uh, and so the fellow who was on with me, who didn't know who I was and I didn't know who he was, but these were both Florida people. Oh, I call them every time before I make a flight. Uh, there's a group in uh, Florida called the Old Farts Club, and they uh, meet at airports uh, every week. And, uh, and he says, I, I fly a tail dragger. I can find out all the information of every airport on my flight. And I said, well, then they asked me, when do you, um, when it, when's the last time you've called? And, and I said about at least 10 years ago. And then I said, you know what? Let me revise that to about 25 years ago. So uh, for some, uh, especially students, it's good to talk to somebody. But I start challenging this guy uh, on the on the uh, on the uh, survey, even on the Zoom call. I could start saying, you know, uh, how can you get more from a briefer when you can select every airport you want for winds in your tail dragger, and you can get up to date? Well, when I get on the ramp, uh, I don't have Wi-Fi anymore, so I can't get that on my iPad. I said, well, you know, for ten dollars, you can equip your Wi-Fi. <laughs> Your, your iPad with a cellular connection and get that on. And I exactly. said, and that's how I do that all the time. So it, we, we've got the greatest system going. And I mean, it's the electronics are wonderful. Uh, the things that an airplane can do uh, with today's modern equipment uh, from our major manufacturers is, is just, just fantastic. And, um, you know, I bought somebody a t-shirt recently that had the standard six pack on the front of it. And it said uh, to it, what part of this don't you understand? Because <laughs> kicking and screaming, I can't get him going into the glass cockpit environment. And yet, when you look at what you get there, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it, it is wonderful. And, and we have to learn, uh, as, I, as I did, you're, you're really managing the airplane. You're managing the system. It's not, you know, I used to feel so bad when I went flying and uh, my, uh, you know, and I turned on the autopilot. Oh my, I'm not a real pilot anymore. But you know what? You really are a pilot in today's environment when you're managing the automation that you have at hand and you're able to look at other things, do other things than just keep that altitude better with an autopilot than you can by hand most of the time. After these messages, Phil talks about what's next as he continues enjoying retirement. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at swiftfuelsavgas.com. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. 
Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Welcome back. As we wrap up part two of this special edition, Jim asked Phil what's next and if he will be at Oshkosh. So, what's next? Well, I'm just, uh, I'm continuing to roll along here. I, uh, I got a couple annuals to get done. The Bonanza has to go to the shop and I'll try to get uh, what needs to be done on the RV-12. But I hate to even open it up because it's running so good. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, and in terms, I'm just, I'm just enjoying life, enjoying the, the freedom that we have in this country to fly and, and all the places you can go. Last year, we'd planned a trip across country. I was born and raised in Portland, Oregon lived on the West Coast. And we've done that trip a couple of times. Actually, one of the times went to Vans to look at the factory before I built the RV-12. And we'd planned that for last year. And then with COVID, uh, you know, flying the plane wasn't bad for the two of us, but getting out in okay. various scenarios where people believed it was real or didn't believe it was real became a real problem. And you didn't know when you were going to land, whether, um, they were believers in this disease and we're gonna take the precautions necessary like rental cars, uh, masks and things. Or So we carried a COVID kit, a little satchel in the airplane with a thermometer and masks and sanitizer and, and other things. But, but So we hope to do that again uh, this year, mm -hmm. if possible, depending on how things go and, uh, and really just uh, get a chance to see kids more and, uh, and grandkids more uh, by using the plane. Will we see you at Oshkosh? Uh, I'm not sure yet. This would, this would actually be the first year that I have no ties to a company or anything that like Aspen, for instance, mm -hmm. because last year there was no Oshkosh. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Um, as I said, we may take this trip across country and um, that, that would be, uh, but you know, it's my favorite show. And I think probably in the last, um, 35 years, I only missed one. And that's when I was doing an international AOPA visit and speech in Australia. So mm -hmm. that was my only excuse. So this may be the first one I miss, uh, myself, you know, well, it's, it's likely to be a barn burner judging by what we saw at the latter end of sun and fun where the crowds definitely exceeded expectations and what we're hearing now and advanced ticket sales. Yeah. Uh, and so forth for Oshkosh. This could be a very big event. We certainly hope it will be because aviation could use all the help it could get. Well, I'll watch your uh, I'll watch your publications, electronic and written. And if I'm not there, I'll feel like I was there. <laughs> well, that, that's that, that's what we hope we'll be able to do for everybody. Phil, I, uh, I appreciate the chance to catch up with you. Uh, you and I have stayed in touch quite a bit over the years. You've been uh, great counsel to us as we've figured our way through a number of things. And I've, you and I have been video geeks talking about equipment and goodies and going to CES and what did we see here and the latest drone and this, that, and the other. And it's been a uh, friendship I've enjoyed immeasurably. And we wish you and Lois, of course, the boss, nothing but the best. And we look forward to seeing you down the line. Great. Thanks for having me on this thing. Well, we look forward to showing people what you've been up to. It's, it's, it's obvious that retirement is only a change in state and mind. You've stayed busy. Yeah, well, it certainly have. Thank you, sir. Well, that does it for this episode of Airborne Special Edition Part 2. This show is now a regular part of the Airborne programming roster. Your suggestions for interview topics are always welcome, and feel free to comment on our social media pages. Thanks for watching.